Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Fraser Field for Northeastern Conference Baseball. A very big one for the Bulldogs. Safe at first base on the bunt by Diverge. Davis is trailing reveal 1 0. We're in the bottom of the first inning. We got a little late start, but we'll catch you up. We got three straight hits. So Burvey got a big strikeout. Then the, then the fourth hit in five hitters. Knocked in the first run. The runner from first to third took a wide turn, got caught in a rundown, got tagged out, and a very nice play by Joe Marmoretta, the shortstop, threw the runner out of first to get out of the inning. He got out of a cheap, bases loaded, nobody out. Revere only got one run, and now English very quickly trying to get back in it. Moretta got hit by a pitch leading off. Diverge, as you just saw, beat out that bunt, and now Diverge steals second. So English has the tying run at first, the go-ahead run at second. Here in the bottom of the first, trying to get right back in it. Again, a very big game for the Bulldogs. Last year, they missed the tournament by like two games, and it was a stretch of like three or four where they lost by one run, making a few errors. They've been playing much better baseball this year. They're nine and four, and a win today would put them in the state tournament. So that would break a little bit of a streak. Chop foul past third base. Moretta's dancing around in third like he might try to steal home. He tried that at the end against Glasgow and was out by a half a mile. So I'm sure Dougie Mullins is saying, stay right where you are. He's trying to distract the pitcher, but you don't want to go too far. So no outs, two on, one nothing Revere here in the bottom of the first. Chop foul past third again. Take going a second, nobody to throw it to. Just trying to keep Diverge close at second. But the shortstop second base weren't within 15 feet of the bag. High for a ball. Diaz is the guy on the mound for Revere. Revere hard pressed. They've got five games left. They're going to win all five to get in the tournament. Pop foul back up in the seats. And I've gone this far without, I do it every game, apologizing. Halfway on your screen is the backstop with the five baseballs in it. You can see those. So it's taking up part of your screen. Hit in the air, foul to left field. Long run for the left fielder. Almost made a nice play. But the overhang, they're gonna, I guess they had a meeting today, or they're having a meeting today to discuss what they're gonna do with this place. The overhang, if you're familiar with Fraser Field, is collapsing. And because of that, the netting is falling down. And then with all the rain and the wind, it's blown the netting. It's an abomination behind home plate, as you can see. So they're supposed to have a meeting today with a group that's gonna come in and try and fix it. My understanding is they're going to put netting under the overhang while they work on it, try to re recoup it, if you will. And while that's going on, all the seats down through that are under the overhang, I don't want the left field to hurt something on that play. They're going out to check on them. All of the seats under the overhang have been cordoned off. You can't sit there. And that's going to be a serious problem because in probably a week or 10 days, the navigators are going to be playing here. And on Friday night when they have fireworks, they almost fill this place. So they've got to do something. So the workers are supposed to come in. It's supposed to take a couple of days what they do. And then probably after the season's over, they'll come in and do some more work. But uh, there's also state tournament games that are played here. And that draws a pretty good crowd as well. 
Eric Ubri, the right fielder, was the hitter. High in the air to left field, deep, going over by the line. The left fielder makes the one-handed catch. He dropped it. Both runners are going to score. Ubri winds up at second base on the two-base error. He had it. It takes a couple of RBI away from Ubri. He would have got one. I'm going to give him the RBI because the run certainly would have scored. So the two run score, English says to Revere, I'll see you one and I'll raise you one. So it's now two to one English. And Juan Suburbi, the pitcher, can help himself here. Still nobody out. Suburbi has been the cleanup hitter for just about every English game the last couple of years. Dougie Mullins, the head guy, doing a very good job with this English program. Time flies. I think this is his second year. Hit in the left field for a base hit. The runner had to wait to see if the ball would be caught. So he'll only get the third. So first and third, the beat goes on for the Bulldogs. So hit basement, I hit, an error, and now I hit. Julian Silvestri is DHing for the left fielder, Julio Figueroa. Julian got a big win on the mound last week. So again, we have first and third. Murphy to catch the signal and what they're going to do if the runner goes to second base. I don't know if you're going to get suburbia stealing. Slices it foul up in the seats. Sparse crowd. Revere has brought three fans. English has brought seven. Maybe nine down by the behind. Another one stuck up in the back. High for a ball. We finally got a good day. It's actually in the 80s. People, in, including myself, in a T-shirt. Hit foul again up in the seats. Hit to short. They won't get two. They got the man in the middle. So Vesha will get an RBI on the field of choice. So a runner at first with one out. Three runs in for the Bulldogs. Albert Torres, the catcher, will be the hitter. It, big hop to the third baseman. Nice throw across the diamond. Nice play by Cravado, the third baseman, over to Lorena, the first baseman. So two way. So Vestry moves over to second base. Ethan Labby, the first baseman, will be the hitter. He's been a jack of all trades. He's played first. He's done some pitching. Most of the time he's been DH for. 
Nice stop by Murphy, the catcher. Swing and a miss. Chased that high pitch up and away, swung right through it. Yeah, second hit batsman of the inning. Hit him right on the number 24. Anthony Mateo was the eighth hitter in the inning. Two on, two out. Three runs in. They wiped out that one nothing reveal lead. Down away for a ball. And Revere couldn't have felt too good about themselves. They had the bases loaded, nobody out, and only got one run. And it looked like they were going to get more because they would have still had the bases loaded and nobody out, except the runner from second took a real wide turn and got picked off. Hit right to the third baseman. Mateo stroked it well. So English sees Revere get three, I'll get one, excuse me, in the top of the first. English answers back and says, we'll triple that. They get three. So at the end of one and this big one for the Bulldogs, English three, Revere one. Bottom three in the order for Revere as we start the second inning. They now find themselves trailing. They were leading going into the bottom of the first. Lorena, the first baseman. I apologize, we don't have first names. They just gave me last names. High and tight for a ball. Warren Suburbi starting his second inning. Just a little sneaky curveball that dropped over. One and two. Off speed pitch. Suburbia wanted that one. It was inside. They thought it caught the corner. Humpire said no, and the count evens the two. Hit to third. Nice defense over there by Mateo. Over to Labby. One up, one down in the second inning. Diaz, the pitcher, will try to get something going for Revere here in the second inning. Down and in. Must be something going on at Manning Field. They see the scoreboard lit up. See a few bodies over there. Waves at that pitch. The place is almost never quiet. Driving home last night, the semi-pro soccer team was playing there. They had a flag football league that plays there. Good little curveball bites the inside corner. Jazz comes up there nice and slow and agonizing. One, two, the count. And he waved at that off-speed pitch again. Good job by Suburbi. Picks up his second strikeout. Uh, Cummings, the DH, hitting for the second baseman. Damazo is the hitter. Down the way for a ball. Missing low again, 2-0. Oh. 
Solidly hit, but pulled it foul. Got out in front just enough to pull it foul past third base. And the count goes to two and one. I forgot to mention over at Mayfield, everything that's going on. They had a, also had a soccer clinic for young kids over there the other night. So these two facilities are used forever. Babe Ruth is using, of course, we have five high schools playing here with Kip, but Babe Ruth is now shifting games in here because they had so many days that they couldn't play at Breed. So he doesn't get his one, two, three inning. He walks Cummins. Leone, the leadoff hitter, he got revealed the one nothing lead in the first. He led off with a single and came around on three other singles. So they got four hits and five batters, a run in, and they only wound up with the one run. There's that little curveball by Shaburvi. He gets that over, makes makes it look like Neff, makes the fastball look like it's uh, 90 miles an hour. Waves at that pitch again. Not overpowering. He just lobs it up there and lets you supply the power. Hit past third base foul. Count stays 0-2 as Suburbia delivers. Goes the other way with it, hits it back into the screen. So a bevy of baseballs caught up in the netting. Five that you can see on your screen. If you could look a little bit to your left, there's three more there. They've knocked a couple out the other day. Almost hit him. Looked like it was going to hit him in the back. It just broke a little bit, wound up inside. I believe that might be St. Mary's lacrosse over there starting up. Popped up. It's going to make it back in the seats. Almost made it back in the press box. You could never hit a ball here, hit to the press box. Now we have to bring gloves because <laughs> now you can hit it into the press box. High and tight for a ball. They throw it down. Cummings gets back. Two is wild. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Here in inning number two. And English leading by two. That didn't miss by much. Oh, the automatic hit and run. The runner first will be off with the pitch. With the payoff pitch. Chop. They're not going to get him, I don't think. Moretta didn't even bother throwing it. Just a little chop. Once they got by the pitcher, it was in no man's land. It was going to be a base hit. So Revere looking for a little two-out lightning. Two easy outs. Now a walk on the head to put two on for the center fielder Furlong. He was the one that got the second base hit, and he was the one that took a wide turn at third and got knocked down on the base pass. That was a big play in the first inning. Labby did a good job getting it to Mateo. Pop foul back. And it was all started by the right field of Ubri getting to the ball very quickly and getting it back. So we have some people si anyway sitting in the seats they're not supposed to sit in. But it's good because they're chasing foul balls. We're making them pay for their seats. Oh, 
Hop foul back again. And the fan here behind the plate is getting a workout. He's going to be a tired gentleman on the way home. Swing and I missed that off-speed curveball. It was almost by him when he swung at that. Nice pitch by Uber. He gets two strikeouts in the inning. Revere leaves a couple. So that little two-out lightning didn't happen. They did leave two on base. Uber got his second and third strikeout. Also issued his first walk. And... Diaz will start his second inning for Revere. And it will be 9-1-2 and two for the Bulldogs. This being Monday, Friday night. Mark your calendars. I believe it's either the 26th or 27th Nipper Clancy Annual Tournament. Nipper was an outstanding gentleman. I like to call him one of the true characters, and I mean that in a good way. He, uh, he was an outstanding baseball coach. And four of his former players got together, Frank Carey, Tiki Mag, Bot Conlon, Jimmy Jettis, to create the Clancy Tournament a very long time ago. And Chipper and Jimmy, his two sons, ran it. And they gave out a ton of scholarship money. Now it switches between... I believe the Lynn ADs, I don't think North Reading gets involved, of course, because it's Lynn. But Frank Carey, of course, brought North Reading in, and for years, it was North Reading, English, Classical, and St. Mary's. What? It was, excuse me, it was Classical, Tech, St. Mary's, and North Reading. English didn't play in it for a while. Coach Ronnie Bennett. Didn't want to play in the Clancy Tournament for whatever reason. And then when they finally come back, there were five teams in the tournament. So they have to take turns each year. One team would sit out. And then finally, uh, Tech uh, dropped out. But it's been going strong. And as I say, he was a true character in the city. Outstanding. He used, to, he used to have his kids run from home to third, and he would race them around the bases. He would go first, second, and third, because they weren't used to doing that. And he didn't win often, but he made it a lot closer because he was not the quickest guy in the world. But he was an outstanding gentleman. He worked for the city. He would show up at somebody's door, knock the door, leave a bag full of groceries because they needed them, and disappear. And they knew where they came from because they knew who... They knew him, and it's only fitting he should be honored every Memorial Day weekend. Luis Pena is the second baseman. He waves at two pitches. Top of the order, Joe Marmoretta on deck. Solidly hit, but right at the shortstop. They almost threw it away. They call him safe. He bobbled the ball at first base. So the error allows him to reach. Second error. Looked like he had it in plenty of time. The first baseman bobbled the ball. Joe Marmoretta got hit by a pitch and scored the run to tie it up for English. They got two more to take the lead. He's finishing up a very good career. He's trying to make a play earlier. He makes plays like that, make them look easy. He also pitches very well. And this young man is going to New Mexico Junior College on a full scholarship. Hits that straight up in the air. Third baseman calling everybody off. Drops the ball, and he's not going to be able to make a play. They're going to try to go to third because there was nobody coming third. They throw it away. 
Great hustle by Pena going all the way to third. Moretta winds up at second. Revere is being very gracious gifts, guests. That was sky high behind the mound. Third baseman called the pitcher off. Had it. Not only did he drop it, he would have had to play it second because the runner at first was going no place. He was almost anchoring the bag. But when he dropped it, he pushed it all the way past the right field foul line, the first base foul line. Everybody's safe. And then with the third baseman chasing the ball in foul territory, good heads up by Pena going all the way to third. And he almost threw it away again. The left fielder backing up. Caught the air and throw. So second throw with nobody out for Diverge who beat out a bunt and scored a run. Diverge is the center fielder. High and tight. For a minute, like that sun was going to go away, but those clouds are gone. The sun comes back out again. Big, puffy, white clouds, blue sky. Just a gorgeous day here at Fraser Field. And we finally deserve it after all the weather. I was dressing like I was going to the hockey rink rather than a baseball game. Oh, he loses the verge. And all of a sudden, English has the bases loaded with nobody out. Eric Ubrey hit a long fly ball to left field that was dropped. He got an RBI. I gave him an RBI, even though it's an error, because the run certainly would have scored on the fly ball to left field. But it wound up scoring two when they drop it. The runner from second also scored. Goes after the first pitch and lifts it. Into left field. Left fielder makes the play. The throw coming to the plate. It was in time, but they couldn't handle it. Oh, Pena with some nice bench running. Made it tough on the catcher. Both runners will move up. Ubrey gets an RBI on the sacrifice fly. Juan Suburbi got a base hit his first time. Chopped towards third. Long throw across the dime, and they were off the bag, but they get back in time. Suburbi, we got an RBI. English has added two more. And they still have a runner in scoring position. Julian Silvestri reached on an error. I'm sure he reached on a fielder's choice. It was 6 4, not E4. So it's now 5 to 1, the Bulldogs. Tapped in a right field for a base hit. The run is going to score. Big two out hit by Silvestri. Diverge hustles around. So English has tripled up in the first two innings. And they've got six on the board. Albert Teresh, the catcher, bounced out third to first. Off the catcher's glove, the pass ball will move the runner to the second base. So, open up the closet door, whatever's falling on, what can fall on, Revere's head is falling all over him. Pass balls, errors, base hits, stolen bases. 
Missing low for a ball. They said eight to the plate in the first inning. This is the seventh hitter in this inning. In for a strike. Way inside for a ball. We almost had our third hit batsman. And I don't, almost hit him again for ball four. Second walk in the inning. Two walks in error. English got three runs. They only got one base hit this inning. Hit foul back. Almost made the press box. Jimmy Tidmarsh to run the scoreboard, bailed out. Off the catcher. That's a wild pitch. That was in the turf. Murphy tried to block it down and in. So that takes away a play any base on a ground ball. They now have to go to first base with two outs. Second and third. Lambie got hit by a pitch his first at bat. One of two that got hit in that first inning. Up and away for a ball. This is English's 14th game. They've got six games left. Usually Clancy tournament ends the season. They're going to go past that. Waved at that high pitch. And we got another deuce as well. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two on. Here in inning number two. So again, we got deuces all over the place. Line shot in the left field. That's going to be two more. It got by the left fielder. So Lamby winds up with a hit. Another error in the inning allows him to go to second. Anthony Mateo was the ninth hitter in the inning. Another pitch in the turf. The wild pitch goes to the backstop. Labby takes a wide turn. He's at third base. <laughs> Diaz having a couple of tough innings. Lewis Pena, who started this inning, is on deck. Hit in the left field for a base hit. Mateo jumps on the bandwagon. So that error in the outfield and the wild pitch allows Labby to come in and score. Well, Dougie Mullins got worried a little bit in that first inning when Revere got four base hits. The bases loaded, nobody out. Revere only got one run, but they were losing English right off the bat. Well, he's feeling a little more comfortable now. Off and running, they pop it up, short center field. Coming on Furlong with the one-handed catch. It's 
So English batted seven in the first. They bat ten in the second. Six of them score. And that one nothing cushion for Revere has now turned into a 9-1 lead Bulldogs over Revere at the end of two. Three, four, and five for Revere. It was a little bit shell shock after the first two innings. Down and in for a ball. This is the other half of the Leone family. One is was the right fielder. They shifted him to left field. The other one was the left was the shortstop. This is the shortstop. Down and in again, two and zero. Oh. So Suburbia's got to feel a little more comfortable. He's been given an eight-run cushion. Misses three and zero. Oh. In for a strike. As you would expect, taking all the way with 3-0. and Hit to third. Nice stop. Got no chance. Great try by Anthony Mateo. But goes by. It might be extra bases. He was going into foul territory. He was actually in foul territory when he smothered it. So Leone gets his second hit. Two out of the three innings, Revere has the leadoff hitter on. And it brings up Cravada, the third baseman, who struck out swinging his one trip. They throw over. I'm not sure why they're worried about the runner at first with an eight-run lead. Solidly hit, but he got way out in front and pulled it well foul down that grassy knoll behind first base. Hit a mile up in the air. Mateo comes in and makes the one-handed catch about ankle high. Made that play exciting. I was doing a game with Frank Carey, who's the winningest coach in New England. Has forgotten more baseball than most people know. And he said the big thing was he was amazed at all. He almost slid the bag, and how many times have we seen that? And it winds up with the second baseman tagging him out. Actually, it was the shortstop. The shortstop took the throw. He was safe at second. He almost slid the bag. Now we're going to see what's happening. They're sending him back to second base. No, he dropped something. That's what it was. I, th I, I was wondering why they were sending him, send him back. So the player's going to go two to six to five to six if you're keeping score at home. Moretta wound up tagging him. He had the base stolen, and we've seen that many times here at Frisia. Tagging, tagged out, over sliding the bag. This time he got away from the tag and Continued on to third for the rundown. And got tagged out. So the second time for Revere. People in scoring position out on the base pass. Sananian, he had a base hit for an RBI his first time. Now he walks. And it brings up Murphy, the catcher, who bounced out short to first.
I guess now it's ball four. He was going to first pitch thinking it was ball four. So I automatically thought it was ball four. It didn't dirty my score sheet because I still got him for ball four. Now it's Murphy the catcher. Curveball drops down and in. I was wondering when I looked up, I saw Murphy the catcher at bat, but I saw Murphy with the shin guys on in the on deck circle. I said, wait a minute. What happened? Again, they're worried about that runner at first base. They pitched out thinking he might be going. Sonanian dies back head first at first base. On the throw by Teresh down to Labby. Sabri almost shot on that one to the plate. Hit in the inner right field. Long run for Ubri coming in. Nice job. He lost his hat, but he kept the hold of the ball. Nice running catch right around just below the knee, I think. Ubi's having a good year defensively and offensively. So Revere gets a hit and a walk, but they run themselves out of another inning. We'll move into the bottom half of the third, and it will be one, two, and three for the Bulldogs after they batted 10 in the second inning. And I have to apologize, too. When they came up, they only gave us the starting lineup. They didn't give us any subs at all. So I know this is Leone, who was the shortstop, who's now the pitcher. I know they have a new first baseman, but I apologize. I don't know his name. And they came up just before the game started and gave us that. Uh, if, if I got it when I went down the dugout, I would have asked for the subs. So I apologize for that. They have subs. I knew that they changed left field or right field because I saw them change after they went out in the field. Moretta has been on base twice. He got hit by a pitch, reached on an error. Both times he scored. His was the high pop-up behind the mound that the third baseman not only dropped, but pushed it past the first base foul line. The runner Pena at first, who reached on an error, was able to go all the way to third. Moretta wound up at second. And they both scored as part in that six run inning. Lined on a right field for a base hit. Moretta's on for the third time. Pretty good by a leadoff hitter.
Hit in the right center field for a base hit. Moretta's going to score easily. Tavares is in with a double. He had a hit and a walk, scoring two. Now he's got a double, knocking in a run. Moretta, who can fly, goes all the way around to score. Up the middle for a base hit. The beat goes on. Ubri is perfect. Tavares scores his third run. Ubri gets his third RBI. Juan Severi is singled, grounded out third to first, getting an RBI. Foul. So English teeing off here. First on Diaz, who went two innings, they gave up nine runs. Now Leone coming in a relief. Hasn't got anybody out yet. High for a ball. A single, a double, and a single. Has not in two. And all of a sudden it's 11 to one. Down and away the pass ball that went off the catcher. Will move Ubriant scoring position. High in the air to right field, drifting away over the right fielder's head. All the way back to the warning track. Suburbi, second double in the inning for English. That ball just kept drifting. Suburbi's got his second RBI. English now has a dozen runs on the board. So eventually he's reached in the field his choice and singled in a run and scored a run. So he's one for two with an RBI and a run scored. He's the fifth hitter in the inning and there's still nobody out. English might want to save a couple of these for the Clancy. Missing wide, the count evens at one. Foul tip off the catcher.
way over the head. So Vestry had a duck under that one. Forget about the one, two, three innings. Revere is lucky if English doesn't bat around in an inning. Eight in the first inning, ten in the second inning. They had batted around twice in the first two innings. And the verge of making it three. That's a wild pitch to the backstop. So Burvey hustles over to third. When after that pitch, it was way up and in. That was ball four. But he liked it, and he fouled it off. And the count goes full. Hit in the air to right field. Drifting back under it. So Burvey hustling in from third. He's a tired young man. He crossed the plate, took a big, 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 deep breath. You don't want your pitcher working that hard. Hit the third. Just got back. Nice play by the first baseman. Third baseman Kravodic made a nice play. Threw it wide to the right field side. And I don't know the first baseman's name. I'm, I apologize again. He didn't give us the backups. He was off the bag, but he got back before Torres could get there. So the play goes 5-3 to three for the second out. Ethan Labby is perfect. Get hit by a pitch. Single knocking in two and scored a run. On the inside corner for a strike. He gets hit for the second time, and you can almost hear it up here in the press box. He's down. That, that hurts. Let's hope he's okay. Let's hope it didn't hit a bone. That's the third hit batsman, first by Leone. Lamby's down. He's going to try and get up, I think. He's a big, tough kid. He's up. Thank God he wasn't hurt. They're going to put a pinch runner in for him at first base. Espinal, I believe, is the runner. Mateo was the hitter. He lined the third, singled in a run. He's the eighth hitter. This is the second time they batted eight. First and third, the second they batted ten. They bounced that one, another wild pitch that was way out. Murphy tried to stop it. So pass balls, wild pitches, hit batsmen, errors. The only thing we haven't had is like a triple or home run. Missing low for a ball.
High for a ball. English has a baker's dozen on the scoreboard, 13. And we're only in the third inning. And they have a runner in scoring position with two outs. Another walk. Three walks, three hit passmen. Luis Pena reached on an error, scored a run, flied out the center field. Both of those at bats came in the second inning. Joe Marmoretta, who started this inning, is on deck. This is almost like batting practice for English. Bouncing it again in front of home plate. We'll move everybody up the wild pitch. Second and third. Again, it takes away a force at any base on a ground ball. Makes it a little more difficult for the defense. Puts a couple of runners in scoring position for Pena. Down and away. Lined in the right center field. That's going to be in for a base hit. It gets by. Third double in the inning. Pena picks up a couple of RBI. Espinal scores the run for running for Labby. Mateo scores. And for the second inning in a row, English has 10 hitters come to the plate. Mateo started this third inning. In for a strike. So after two, after four runs in, two outs. Hit Baskin, a walk, a double. Second six-run inning. High and tight for a ball. Way inside. This extra long inning has given Suburbi a chance to rest in the dugout after huffing and puffing around the base pass. And another hit batsman. Diverge is perfect. Single and scored. Walked and scored. Doubled in a run and scored. He's been involved in four of the 15 that Classical has put on the board. Almost hit Diverge. Inger's going to blow out the light bulbs on the scoreboard. I am tight again. In for a strike. Two on the count.
on the corner. So we got Deuce as well. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two on. Here in the bottom of the third. English one up their second inning. This is the 11th hitter. Hit foul towards the Revere dugout. In case you're wondering at home, there is a mercy rule. 15 runs after five, actually four and a half. Way up and in. So the hit and run is on, full count. Two one, everybody will be running. Strike three called. He started the swing, held up, thinking it was outside, and they rung him up. So for the second inning in a row, English bats around. They send 11 to the plate. They match the second inning. They put six more on the board. We played only three innings here at Fraser Field. Lynn English, 15. Revere, one. All kinds of changes, and believe it or not, we talked about Revere not giving us subs. Dougie Mills forgot to put one of his subs on the list. Justin Flores is the new third baseman as Mateo will move over the shot. So we have to wait and see how they hit. Some Rivy moved over to first base. So Justin Flores could be hitting in Labby spot. Punch foul towards the third base coach. Count goes full. Lorena. The first baseman bounce out third to first. And this is the sub that we do not know who it is. I am tight for a ball. And I guess they must have two number 12s because Leone was the sounding shortstop number 12. And now he's batting in the pitcher spot for Diaz. So this is the pitcher that came in. So it wasn't the shortstop Leone that came in. This is another sub that we don't know who it is. I think what happened, it, you may notice if you're paying attention, if you haven't fallen asleep by now with 15 to 1, the varsity has the blue shirts with the red numerals. I think these are G JV, like a JV player with the white number on the back and a little different jersey. And I think the reason for that is they've had a few problems at Revere. They asked for a copy of a tape of a game that just they played here recently against Classical because they had some problems and I guess a, a few of their players quit. So they had to bring up some JVs. And this has got to be one of the JVs. And he's wearing the same number as the shortstop. Swing and a miss. He has the previous pitcher had been up once and struck out. High and tight. Back-to-back -back walks issued by Espinal. Cummings, the DH, drew a walk. 
hitting for the second baseman, DeMazzo. In for a strike. Hit in the air to left field. Coming all the way in with that one-handed grab is Figueroa. One away right now with 2-1. And this is Leone, the outfielder. Leadoff hitter a single twice and scored the one run. His run gave Revere a very short-lived one nothing lead in the first inning. He can just get rid of that right away, getting three, and they've added six in each of the next two innings. Swing and a miss. In on the hands, he swung right through it. Hit to third. Tag third for one. Throw to first. Nice double play. Good job by Justin Flores, who just came in the game. Five to three double play. So with two walks, they only face four hitters in the fourth inning. We're halfway through the ball game. English would love to get a run here because if they do three outs in the fifth, it would be a game. And we're bringing another, another pitcher for Revere. Uh, unless he was in the starting lineup, we won't know who he was or is. It'll be three, four, and five for the Bulldogs. I'm, I'm going to guess, but I think Tuggy Mills will probably go to his bench a little bit. The D.H. Cummings is now pitching. We're going to get a parade of pinch hitters, I would think. Claudius Prandis is swinging a bat. He's an infielder. If he's up first, he's going to be hitting from... Ubri. <laughs> and he will be hitting. For oh, Ubri. We're going to get some warm up in the bullpen as well. So Prandis will hit for Ubri. Ubri was perfect. He reached on an error, 
knocking in a run, hit a sacrifice fly for an RBI, singled in a run and scored. So he's knocked in three and scored two. Chop to third. He beat it for a base hit. Jimmy Polonia will hit for Ubri. Way inside for a ball. On the inside corner for a strike. A run here would put Revere three outs away from virtually being knocked out of the state tournament, although it's, the road is very difficult. But they still have a life. That life will be taken away. It's going to be taken away anyway because they're not, certainly not going to come back on this one. So even if they win their last four, They'll finish up the last game of the regular season will be their last game. Very late swing. Fisty, the coach at first, couldn't make the play. It went by him. Hit foul off the catcher. Two to the count to Polonia, the pinch hitter. And the count goes full. Six loyal Revere fans have stayed. Only three English fans remain. That's ball four. So first and second, Julian Silvestri will be the hitter. Reached in a field of choice, singled in a run, hit a sacrifice fly. He's knocked in two and scored a run. As has just about everybody. All nine starters have scored. Diverge and Moretta have scored three. Hit the second base. They make the play to first. Eric Enriquez will hit for Torres. And I think even the Revere coaching staff is rooting for a run to come in here. So this could get over quickly. Nice stop by Murphy, the catcher. Down away for a ball. So a single, a walk, and a ground out to move the runners up to second and third in what could be the winning run at third base. 
They still have to get three outs for Revere. Swing and a miss. So Enriquez wants to at least put the ball in play and get a run home. In for a strike. Count evens at two. Slaps it to first. The runner didn't go. They have the runner picked off at second. They tag him. The run scored. By the time they tagged him. So the run scored before they tagged Polonia. So we're through four. It's now 16 to one, and this three outs without Revere scoring. This could be the ball game, a mercy rule. 16 to one, English going into the fifth inning. Two, three, and four for Revere as we start what could be the last inning. Espinal will start his second inning of work. Hit in the air. Juan Suburbi, another one-handed play. Right next to the first base coach's box in foul territory. One pitch, one out. Leone the shortstop, as opposed to Leone the outfielder. He's two for two. Line shot to center field. That's over the center fielder's head. He's got his third straight hit. And he's got to come across the score to keep the game alive. Cravada, the third baseman, has struck out and popped to third base. So Leone's been a bright light for Revere. He's made a couple of nice plays in the field. He's got three base hits. Up and in for a ball. Leone at second base. He was the one that stole second, overslid the bag, and wound up getting tagged out in that bizarre rundown with the shortstop winding up making the out at third base, Moretta at the time. They threw it to the third baseman. He missed the tag. And then Moretta hustling over, covered third, and got the tag. Hit to right center field. Coming over, making the play. To Verge. Revere is down to their last out. Sananian has singled in a run and walked. High for a ball. And this is a pinch hitter that we have no idea who it is. We do know it's number 21. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. Revere down to that last strike. Oh. 
backs away. The ball just hung inside. And we got deuces wild. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Ingles one strike away from getting into the state tournament. It's been a while. Strike three, ducked away from the curveball, and it dropped in. Revere winds up with seven hits. They get a one nothing lead in the first inning, and then the roof fell in on them. English got three in the first, six in both the next two innings. They got the run they needed in the fourth. We only have to go four and a half. English will pick up their tenth win. They are officially in the state tournament. They win it by a score of 16 to one, and everybody contributed. Joe Marmoretta was on base three times, scored three runs. Andy Diverge had a single, a walk, a double, scored three, knocked in a run. Eric Ubri reached on an error, hit a sacrifice fly, got a base hit. Pitch hitting for him was Claudius Prandis, who got a base hit. Prandis scored a run, Ubri scored two. So Burvey had a single, a double, a walk, a ground out. He knocked in two and scored a run. Julian Silvestri had two RBI. Got a base hit with an RBI. Knocked in two and scored a run. Alba Torres scored a run. Drew a walk. Ethan Lambie got hit twice. We know he's okay. He was getting up and around, so we know he's all right. He also got a base hit and knocked in two. Mateo had a single, a walk. Knocked in a run, scored a run. Luis Pena, Risa Nera, had a double knocking in two and scored a run. So everybody contributed. Every starter in the lineup scored a run. Moretta and Diverge, the top, and Ubri, the top three, scored six. As English piled it up, two six-run innings. They batted 10 in the third, second. They batted 11 in the third. And it's going to be a tough bus ride home for Revere as English Walks over in a mercy rule, 16 to 1 for their 10th win. Congratulations, Dougie Mullins and the English Bulldogs. They become the third team in the city, matching Lynn Classical and St. Mary's to go win. Lynn will be well represented in the state tournament. They missed it just by an inch last year. They make it very easy a little bit earlier this year, and they can add to their seating probably if they can win a few more. So 16 to 1, English over Revere. We hope you enjoyed it. I'm John Hoffman for Ken Vorspan on the camera. We'll see you next time.